Hi everybody, my name is Brianne McDeed. I am the Senior Event Specialist for Bluehost. Um, I am going to be talking with Michelle Frechette today about how to start a podcast. I'm just gonna pin this message real quick. Great, and Michelle is requesting to be in the video, so she's going to jo join us here shortly. Let's see here. <gasps> Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, nice to be here. So wonderful to see your face. Thank you so much for I'm joining good, thanks. us today. You know, working from home like everybody else. Yes, yes, of course. Um, so, it's uh, my pleasure. Again, um, welcome everyone for joining. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, how to start a podcast. I have Michelle Frechette here. Um, so just to sort of kick us off, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself uh, personally? Sure. So I've, like you said, Michelle Prichette, I'm in Rochester, New York. It actually was snowing about 15 minutes ago here today. So it's a little interesting out here. Um, I work for full time for GiveWP and I'm happy to work, help customers through that, um, you know, through what, what I do on a day to day basis. But one of the things I love is podcasting. Oh, there's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to make an appearance no matter what I do. I love it. That's awesome. I have three myself, but they, they're just floor mongers. So. <laughs> well, um, that's, that's great. Uh, so um, just for the audience, uh, so that they know what's your podcast called and what's it about? Yeah, it's WP Coffee Talk. And on WP Coffee Talk, I talk to people in the WordPress community uh, on a regular basis, actually. So I have 76 episodes out so far. I've got another 30 that have been recorded and that I'm working on getting out into the public. And I ask every set, every single customer or customer, I ask every single guest the same set of questions. So I kind of think of it as kind of like the great WordPress equalizer because it doesn't matter if you just started your business and you just started learning WordPress or, you know, hopefully someday Matt Mullenweg will be on the show. I'll ask him the same set of questions as everybody else. And so hearing everybody's answers is um, not only fun and interesting, but really informative. And I think that a lot of the things that people have to share help other people learn how to use WordPress better. Yeah, for sure. So. Um, I've, I've seen the podcast. I think that it's wonderful. I love the way that you go about things. Uh, you're a great host. Um, so Thanks. You know, at the end of this, uh, we'll, uh, we'll sort of plug how people can watch that. But um, just... Uh, sure. Just for everybody watching, yeah, Michelle is um, is a wonderful podcast host. She's very knowledgeable about all this stuff. So, um, oh, Julie says she loves your podcast. Hi, <laughs> Julie. I love Julie. <laughs> all right. So, um, how have you been? How long have you been um, hosting your podcast? So, I actually just started it last June. So, I I had like this last minute thought in May. I was like. I wonder what, how much work it would be to host a podcast. I wonder if I could host a podcast. And I was like, well, you know, I'll try it. What would I even do? And so I was sitting in, I was sitting in a school board meeting and making notes to myself about the kinds of questions I could ask because the yeah. board meeting was really boring. And <laughs> I've got other more interesting things I can think of to do. So like in the bottom of my minute, I'm like writing this, writing me to make you choke. <laughs> writing little notes to myself of questions that I would ask somebody if I was doing an interview show, which is exactly what I ended up building. And I actually thought to myself, well, this could be interesting. It'll probably die a sad little death. <laughs> and maybe I'll get a couple episodes out and everybody be like, that was nice, Michelle, you know, kind of thing. And yeah. instead, it was super exciting that within a few days, I had over 250 followers on Twitter. Um, by the end of the first week of just being published, I had four people already scheduled to be on the show. And now um, we've recorded over 100 episodes. Well, the royal we. It's just me. I've recorded yeah. over, <laughs> over 100 episodes. Um, and I've talked to, like, so many different wonderful people. Um, literally, the only continent I haven't spoken to yet is Antarctica. So if there's a WordPress person in Antarctica, I want you on the show. You have to reach out to Michelle. You have to do it. <laughs> so, so what inspired you to get into podcasting? Uh, the same thing that inspires me to do a lot of other things, just the curiosity to see if I could make it happen. 
I love learning and like the idea of, well, what would go into a podcast? Could I make it work? Can I use my marketing background to kind of like spread the word? And like I said, will it die a sad death or could I actually, might it actually have some legs and like continue on? And so it was pretty exciting to like go from that kernel of, I wonder if, and the first time I ever even thought about it was in 2017 at WordCamp Portland, Maine. And I just sat in um, a talk. I embarrassingly don't remember even who it was that gave the talk. But, um, and it was all about podcasting. And he was t- podcasting about gaming. And I was like, well, I'm not a gamer, but I could think of something else to talk about, you know? And then when I started to think about what do I really know, I'm like, I know the WordPress community and I know people in WordPress. And so that was the most natural progression for me. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I'm so happy that you were inspired to start it and and <laughs> took the took the leap to do it because it's a very it's a great podcast and it's um I think that that's important you know when you when you have this drive to do something just try it you mm-hmm. know why like why not um, yeah exactly yeah uh you know if if it doesn't work out that's okay you can try something else but um you mm-hmm. know it's important to like to to actually make the effort to try something that you're interested in so I mean I I wanted to learn to knit once upon a time and I yeah like I got like halfway through a scarf and was like yeah this isn't for me me. I think I can keep on with it (laughs) yeah so uh what would you say the appeal of podcasts as a form of entertainment and informational consumption um are compared to other types of consumable media sure so when you think about like podcasts every um, podcaster usually has a theme Right. So my theme is WordPress and it's the WordPress community and talking to people in WordPress. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know that every time you listen to that podcast, you're consuming more of that knowledge and more of that information in that in that particular track. If you turn on the radio, you might hear songs you like. You might hear songs you don't like. If you turn on the television, you might watch a program you like or not. But when you talk about a podcast, it's like watching the same show you like over and over. So like if if Grey's Anatomy is your thing and you've been watching for 15 years or whatever, you know that every Thursday you can watch Grey's Anatomy and you're going to enjoy it. It's the same idea. So it's it's consuming the same kind of information on a regular basis. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I also think that podcasts are kind of, um, whether they're video or audio, they're really easy to to listen to. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're like, working out or going for a walk or some people can can listen to them while they're working Um, I know I I can I know we talked about this the other day (laughs) Um, and so I I think that that podcasts are a very they're a very um, unique form of media where you can you can sort of multitask sometimes and 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 still be consuming that media Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so you can you can do other things well, yeah, and it's free, right? You can right. listen to any podcast for free. Yes. And it's great if you want to support your podcaster. And, you know, some podcasts have Patreon and some have donations pages and things like that. It's great if you want to, but you don't have to. You can actually consume all of that for free. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, just for, for people who are just now joining, um, I just wanted to sort of let y'all know that if you have any additional questions, you can ask them um, in the comments or you can ask them. There's a little question button with a, a question mark down there um, and we can get to those at the end if you have any additional questions. So um, I sort of wanted to talk about now uh, getting into maybe some technical aspects. Uh, so what would you say are the key components to a successful podcast? You know, this could include prep, execution, follow up, mm-hmm. things like that. So um, for me, prep, the preparation was coming up with the right set of questions that I'd want to ask over and over and over again. And mm-hmm. I don't always ask them the same exact way. Sometimes I paraphrase them. I don't always get them in the same order because sometimes it's been a week or two and I'm not looking at my script and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I forgot a question, you know? <laughs> so I think that there's two things. There's one is coming up with the format that you want to use on a regular basis, something that you're not going to get bored with. Because if you are bored with the same set of questions over and over, it's going to translate into how you talk to your guests, it's going to translate into how it sounds. Um, The right software is super important. Uh, The right equipment is super important. If you're using uh, your computer mic, for example, it might sound tinnier depending on your computer um, than having a good um, external mic. So like somebody actually gifted me a Yeti microphone with a nice pop filter and I love it. I use it. It's on a boom arm. I pull it down in front of me. I feel like, you know, super um, professional (laughs) when I've got all my equipment going. Um, and that's exciting. And then also editing. I, sorry about that. I don't oh, yeah. edit. 
don't edit all of my like the conversation so like if you and i if you were on my podcast whatever you say that comes out of your mouth if you sneeze any of that's gonna stay on the show because it's about having coffee with a friend mm-hmm. if you know if you and i are having coffee i'm not gonna say oh sorry you can't sneeze here right but I do yeah. edit like the, the in, I add an intro, I add an outro at the end to support WP and up, which is important to me. And um, everything else that has to render video because I do um, do my podcast not only on your regular podcast, so you can listen to them on any of the different aggregators that you listen to your podcast on. But I also have a YouTube channel so that if people want to watch and see facial expressions and look at the mugs that people are holding, they can do that too. So understanding how all of that works together and then putting together show notes and getting it all published. It's, um, it's a work of, it's it's an effort of love because it is not something that just happens automatically. (laughs) Yeah. So, so what I'm understanding is basically you have to, you have to come up with what your, what works for your podcast, like your list, like before, during, after, and Mm -hmm. then sort of execute those things. um, Yeah. For, for each episode and sort of figure out, figure out how, how it works for you and if it, if it's yeah. efficient enough for you. So. Yeah, and even just having a checklist of what you do every single episode is helpful so that, like, I don't forget to change out the featured image. Because um, I, right. you know, I, I haven't, I don't want to have to copy my format every time. So I just, I clone posts, right? And if I put mm-hmm. the wrong featured image out there, that's super embarrassing. So that's what I've done it, but I've come close. So having a <laughs> list of things that you can go through to make sure that if it says Brie, it's not some guy with a beard, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I think that that's all super important. Um, can I ask what, uh, what software do you use? Sure, so I actually, I record everything over Zoom. Um, okay. So I was a Zoom user before COVID. I just want that out there. <laughs> you, were, you were an OG Zoom user? I was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> so I do, I use Zoom um, to record the podcast. It records both audio and um, video so that I don't have to like pull audio off of the video stream so it's really nice that it does both of those things for me and then I use uh, Adobe Rush to do all my photo um, I'm sorry my video editing and I use Audacity which is free Adobe Rush isn't free it's part of the Adobe um, suite but um, Audacity is free to use and I use Audacity to put all my audio together and then I upload the audio through anchor.fm and I upload the video to YouTube Okay. That's great. Yeah. Those are all awesome tools. Um, so I, I would say I would encourage people to like look into those and do their research on, on other tools and see what sort of works for them. Absolutely. Um, Everything is people, different things are going to resonate differently with people as to what they like to use. Yeah, definitely. So if someone is kind of, uh, hesitant about starting a podcast and they're wondering like who would listen to this? Um, why should I even do this? Uh, what advice would you give for a beginner who's kind of going back and forth on whether or not they should start? I would say come up with all of your why first. So it's important to know why you want to do it. Like I wanted to see if I could do it. And I knew that if I failed at it, I wasn't going to be like heartbroken. It wasn't going to be one of those things where I walked away going, I'm a failure. It was for me, it was a learning experience that actually turned into something. And that yep. was my why. If your why is because you want to introduce, and that way my other why, of course, is to introduce people to the WordPress community, um, because that's my passion. But if your why is like is gaming and you like Dungeons and Dragons and that's what you want to podcast about, make sure that you really love it. Make sure that you have enough information to share on a regular basis. And that if you are going to be doing interviews, that you have people that you can pull into that to do. So it's all about the preparation and making sure that it's something you want to follow through with. There was an episode on um, a TV show called The Middle, where the younger son is totally into fonts. And he had started a podcast, Fun with Fonts, and he did one episode. He had one listener, and he said, okay, mission accomplished, and that was it. So, to, you know, understand why you're doing what you're doing and how long yeah. you want to do it, all of those different things, so. Yeah, so um, we've actually had a few questions come in. Uh, so <laughs> let me see. Um, so someone says, is a total upstart podcast expensive to start? Um, I started it free. So I, um, I, I used uh, the microphone that was given to me. I used my MacBook Air for years until I just recently got, well, years, since last year, since I just got recently got a MacBook Pro. Um, I used free software. I used Audacity. I was not using, I was not putting an intro and an outro. So I was just uploading the video right into YouTube. I, I didn't, like, other than the domain name, I didn't pay for anything to start. Gotcha. 
so so you can do it pretty much you can start at bare bones um what what, yeah and and really really do it um in an an inexpensive way so yeah so um I kind of want to talk about audience now. Um, how would you identify and draw in the right audience to your podcast? And how would you keep them coming back for more? Sure, that's a really good question. Um, and at the beginning, I was wondering about that myself. And I realized that, you know, you have to discover where your audience lives. So for me, I have a lot of friends on, on Facebook. I have a lot of um, you know, WordPress friends on Facebook, but that's not really where our conversation around WordPress happens. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was getting, building that audience through Twitter, you know, and in less than a year, I've got over a thousand followers on Twitter and the episodes get shared out really well. Um, It is aggregated through Anchor FM into like, I don't know, 12 different podcast um, areas like, you know, Apple Podcasts and Podbean and all those different places um, have it now too. And any place else I can submit it to if people are like, I can't hear your your podcast. Well, let me know where I'll, I'll submit it. I did that today, actually, for somebody. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really just about knowing where your audience lives and then finding a way to propagate through there and asking people that, that you, that you know, and love to be on the show and to mm-hmm. kind of get the ball rolling, you know, although I will say that the very first person that ever said, I want to be on your show, I had no idea who she was. She's a good friend now. But yeah. Back then I was like, okay. And I was a sure. terrible host. I was terrible. I had no idea like that. Oh, I have to pause for her to answer because Zoom won't let us both talk at the same time. Yeah. So I was talk- it, was, it was, I was awful. She was wonderful, but I was terrible. <laughs> I've learned a lot. You've learned. Yeah. So um, this kind of can lead us into um, another one, another audience question we have. Uh, sure. How does one market his or her own podcast? So I have a, a, um, I have a Facebook page for the podcast and I post episodes there. I have an Instagram page that I'm terrible about posting to and I need to do more. So no judgment, I promise promise I'll do better (laughs) with that. I know for sure. Um, And then uh, Twitter. And those are the three places that I put it out. So I have subscribers, not a ton, but I have subscribers on YouTube. I have a lot more subscribers through all the different um, podcast areas. You know, people are telling me all the time that they hear me and, you know, they're listening to the show in different places. Um, and then I do things like I have stickers printed up and I bring them with me to word camps and I hand out podcast stickers and, you know, I have mugs printed out and I, and what, and one thing I do that I think is unique to my podcast too, if you're on my podcast, I ask you for your home address or mailing address. And after you've been on my podcast, you get a handwritten thank you note for me and a couple of stickers that say, here my episode on WP Coffee Talk. So if you put those on your laptop, you are like one of elite people that and nobody else has those unless you've been on the podcast. So little ways like that, that I try to incentivize people also to share their episodes. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, So I know that uh, we had talked about starting a podcast, um, you can do it sort of in an inexpensive way. But if you build Mm -hmm. traction um, and audience, uh, you might get to the point where you can monetize your podcast. Um, So uh, when should a podcaster start monetizing their content? As soon as they publish their website. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no reason not to ask for sponsors right from, from the start. So I have two things mm-hmm. on my website. One is sponsorship. And so there's different levels of sponsorship. And I'm happy to say that like um, Helix Managed WordPress Hosting, Text Expander, um, you know, there's, uh, who's the other one? I, I'm just like escaping my brain right now. Termageddon, there's a whole bunch of, play, of uh, people that actually sponsor the podcast. And yeah. it's, oh, GoWP, GoWP sponsors podcast. And that's awesome. So, you know, I get a monetary gift from them on an annual basis to help keep things going. But I also have a tip jar. So I, I call myself the podcast barista because it's all about coffee. And I'm a marketer, so I had to do something cute with it. Um, and I have, a, so I have a tip jar for the podcast barista. And I've, I've, I've made about $200 worth of like Patreon type tips right into the tip jar just because people that's appreciate awesome. the show. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's not something I expect. I don't do this. I'm not doing it to make money. If I make enough money with the podcast to cover my expenses going forward, I'm happy. Um, yeah. But it's so super nice when you get a little like, hey, somebody really appreciated that here's 20 bucks, you know? Yeah. So I kind of want to go back to the sponsors part. Yeah. Um, how, how would 
a podcaster go about actually getting sponsors? Would would it be best to kind of go the email route, um, maybe like a handwritten letter, uh, start with pe start with companies that they might already be affiliated with? Um, what sort of different avenues can people go down? Um, I'm really blessed in that they came to me. So they heard the episodes and they really liked them and they're like, hey, I'm getting applications through the website to sponsor. Um, and then there were people that I really want, needed their help. So like, for example, tech, or not a text expander, te expander digital, expander digital is an SEO company. And although I understand SEO, it's not my strength and I don't want to spend time doing it. So yeah. I, tr so I, you know, I barter, so they are a sponsor and they do all of that work for me on my site. I bartered some of the hosting, you know, I bartered with term again, and I have terms and conditions on my website that I didn't have to write in order for them to have that. So um, so there's different things like that that are, make it a little bit easier. But other than that, I actually ask people. So sometimes if I have somebody uh, as a guest on the show who is with a bigger company, you know, we'll, we'll turn off the recording and be like, hey, and if you want to sponsor, enough, you know, sponsor the podcast, I'm always accepting sponsors. And that's how I get some sponsors too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so we have, I had another question come in. Um, this person I think has just joined recently. So um, they said, what should I prepare to start making a podcast? So can you kind of just go over that checklist again? Um, yeah. Just sort of that, that basic stuff just for people who are starting. Yeah. So for me, it was a, it was a series of let's make a, a list of what do I want to do with this podcast? Why do I want to start it? What do I want my format to be? And is it something that I have enough passion about to move forward past a few episodes and not get bored with it? Um, and so the WordPress community for me is, is that, right? I'll never get tired of all the people in the WordPress community. And then coming up with, well, if I do an interview show, what questions will I ask? Will it just be like free form? We just have a conversation or will I work through the same set of questions, which is what I do on my podcast. And then past that, it was, okay, how do I actually physically make it happen? What equipment do I need? What software do I need to use? And talking to other people in the industry, like Joe Casabona and other people that I know that are doing podcasts on a regular basis, filled in a lot of those broad strokes for me. Um, and then after that, it was like, okay, I've got one recorded. I'm going to push publish now and see what happens, you know? And I was really lucky that this, that the way I run my show is something that appeals to people and that I'm so lucky to have so many people want to be on the show that it keeps moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are all happy that you decided to, <laughs> to push the publish button on that first episode. <laughs> so um, I think, I think that um, that's the end of our audience questions. If anybody else has any questions they want to throw in here, um, please feel free to. Otherwise, um, Michelle, can you tell us uh, where people who are watching can find you to uh, watch your podcast and also ask yeah. more questions um, about Absolutely. podcasts too? Absolutely. Yep. So I do have a website for the podcast, wpcoffeetalk.com. There's a contact form on there. It's getting spammed a lot. So make sure you don't write in Russian. Um, <laughs> other than that, I'm pretty sure I can read what's going on. Um, but yeah, there's a contact form on there. You can, every episode that's on there has a link to the podcast and a link to the YouTube um, episode. And you can also subscribe through the subscriber button to, through your favorite um, podcast aggregator. Um, and there's a button for that too. And there's a, there's a form on there if you want to be on the show and you are in the WordPress community, I would love to have you. That's awesome. Well, I think that that can wrap it up for us. Um, thank you so much to everybody for tuning in and for asking some questions. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us today and, uh, you know, letting everybody know your, your podcast um, knowledge. We're all so thankful for you. Um, oh, we actually have another question here. Um, okay. What is a podcast and how different is it from a blog or a vlog? That's a great question. So a vlog would be a video blog, right? So that's something where you're just providing video content. And a blog, of course, is written content. A podcast is something that you can subscribe to through any podcast aggregator like um, Apple Podcasts or Podbean. Some of the, I mean, there's a million of them. Um, and then you just get notified when, your next ep when the next episode to something you've subscribed to comes up and you can automatically start listening to it there, which is why it's really interesting. When I push publish on the podcast side of things, Within about 10 minutes, I've got five or six listeners because it's already loaded into their queue, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So podcasting is great because you can just plug it into, you know, through your phone. Um, I was going to say through your um, iPod, but I guess people don't use those anymore. 
<laughs> it's okay. It wasn't it wasn't that long ago that iPods were a thing. There you go. There you go. Or you know, through your computer, whatever. However, you can even listen yeah. through to them through like Google Home or um, Amazon Echo. You can have podcasts uh, read to you through all those different places. So, lots of fun ways to listen to them and get into get entertainment and education. Yes, absolutely. Well, again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michelle. Um, thank you so guys, much for having me. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions for Michelle, go to WPCoffeeTalk.com, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you can uh, listen to her podcast there, and you can also um, ask her any additional questions that you might have about podcasts. I'd be happy to. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you Fantastic. have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, and have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bree. Bye.